Hi, I'm Ben, an application specialist at Modern Panlistical, and today I'm going to be demonstrating SOP Architect on the master size of 3000 plus, the latest development in laser diffraction technology for particle size analysis. The master sizer has a long history with laser diffraction, and over the many generations, we've introduced software features such as standard operating procedures or SOPs on the master sizer 2000 and data quality guidance on the master sizer 3000. SOP Architect is again introduced to help make your lives easier, but this time with respect to method development. Method development has many associated challenges, such as sample preparation, sample dispersion, and ensuring that we've got the correct measurement settings. SOP Architect is a guided workflow that allows you to invoke standard procedures that can be followed to make sure that the settings you are using are going to give you the best and most suitable uh, settings for the measurements that you are trying to perform. So I will now open up SOP Architect on the Master Sizer Explorer software. SOP Architect is a guided workflow that's going to take us through the necessary steps to ensure that we have an ideal method developed for measuring our sample. It's going to take into consideration sample preparation, sample dispersion, before giving us the option of carrying out a series of titrations to give us the ideal conditions for our stirrer speed and laser obscuration. I'll now carry out an example by measuring this titanium dioxide powder. So the first thing that we'll have to do is input some information about our material. So as I've already said, we'll be looking at a titanium dioxide sample today, and we can find the optical properties for this material within the Malden Panlytical database. From here, we can select the uh, method development steps that we would like to carry out. So today, we'll first be looking at the stability. So I'll be measuring this titanium dioxide sample in water. And from there, we'll be finding the optimum stirrer speed and laser obscuration for this sample. At the bottom of this page, we also have the option of estimating the particle size that we're going to be measuring. And this can help speed up any measurements that we'll be performing. Here we have a series of steps to help guide you through the sample preparation process, whether that be for a powder or liquid sample. We also have some advice on carrying out beaker tests before the measurement to ensure that your sample is dispersing accordingly. As well as other options such as selecting the dispersant that we're going to be measuring. So as I've said, we'll be measuring in water and we've got the refractive input index input here. And we also have the option of selecting the cleaning steps that we would like to perform after the measurements are carried out. So I will now carry out the stability check looking at this titanium dioxide sample in water. By clicking next, we'll now open up the measurement manager window where the instrument is going to carry out the initialization and a measurement of the background. So now that the laser has been correctly aligned and the background measured, we can now add the sample until we reach the desired obscuration value. Once we've got into this green zone, there will now be a pause of 30 seconds to allow the material disperse before we'll carry out a series of six measurements to help determine the sample stability. So now that it's started measuring, it's going to be looking at key considerations such as the scattering data and the relative standard deviations to take into account whether our sample is stable. So it will be able to tell us if our sample is dissolving, agglomerating or still dispersing over time. As you can see by looking at the trend view, our sample isn't stable. Now, if we look back into the SOP Architect feature, we'll be able to see what the feedback is. So the SOP Architect is informing us that our sample is not stable and is in fact likely to be agglomerating or possibly dissolving. So what we'll need to do now is try and fix our dispersion but by, by perhaps adding in an additive which we'll do to reassess the stability checks. Following the guidance from SOP Architect, we are now repeating the stability check, however with the addition of a stabilizer known as sodium hexametaphosphate, which should hopefully stabilize the dispersion going forward. We now look at the trend view. We can see that we have a much flatter line with respect to our DV90, indicating that the dispersion is now much more stable. So now that we've finished our six measurements, we can see that we have a very stable dispersion and we can now consult the SOP Architect window to see how we proceed. 
So we can see that the SOP Architect software feature has now advised us that we've passed the stability check and can proceed. So now that we have a stable dispersion, we can move on to the next stage of the process, which is a stirrer speed titration. This will carry out a series of measurements at different stirrer speeds to assess the correct one for our material. It's going to take into account things such as, are we suspending all our material? Or by using higher stirrer speeds, are we making this, the system more unstable? So I'm now going to add the sample again until we reach the desired obscuration value. So now that we've added the sample, it's going to stabilize at each stirrer speed for 30 seconds before carrying out a series of measurements at each individual stirrer speed. This will take between 15 to 20 minutes and allows you to go have a bit of time for a cup of tea or respond to some emails. So now that our stirrer speed titration has finished, you can see that SOP Architect advises that the most optimum stirrer speed is 2000 RPM. In addition to this, you'll also see that we have a warning come up on the screen saying that at higher stirrer speeds, notably 3400 RPM, we may be forming agglomerates. So for the next stage of the process, we're going to carry out an obscuration titration. This process is similar to the one that was used to determine the optimum stirrer speed, but here we're going to carry out a series of measurements at different obscuration values to, in order to determine the correct obscuration range for this sample. So I'm now going to add the sample into the dispersion unit, aiming for a target obscuration value of between 2 and 3% to begin the obscuration titration. So now that we've reached our target obscuration value, it will now stabilize for 30 seconds before carrying out six repeat measurements. So now that our obscuration titration has finished, we can see that SOP Architect has given us an ideal obscuration range of between four and 8%. This should give us a good amount of signal such that we have good signal to noise, whilst minimizing the amount of multiple scattering that may be occurring that can lead to overestimating the amount of fines within our particle size distribution. For the next step, we're going to assess the method repeatability by carrying out three separate measurements to verify that the SOP settings we've chosen are correct. So we're now going to test three separate aliquots of our sample using the measurement settings that have been optimized using SOP Architect in order to assess the method repeatability. So now our method repeatability tests have finished and we can see that the three aliquots that we have measured are within the variability limits that we have set. That now concludes the SOP architect process and we can now save this SOP for future use when measuring this sample. Thank you for joining me today to see why methods matter and how SOP architect can make your method development easier.